good evening good afternoon and good morning to everyone who wherever you are from around the world so we have got the sudhir joshi our next speaker uh, he is the head of success at uh, customer success at lemra test in new delhi um, he is uh, going to talk today the continuous testing at scale hello everyone my name is sudhir and i'm heading uh, customer success at lemra test first of all i'm honored to be here talking at selenium conference um, and thank you to the audience for your interest today i'm going to touch base on some of the key challenges when organizations are adopting to continuous testing especially at scale so let's see okay so what where does where does continuous testing fits in very simple we all know right we want to test more at each stage of stlc and the idea is as businesses shipping more code they want to really ship it faster that puts some immense pressure on the testing community and you know i in fact interestingly i was speaking to um i've i've spoken to about 100 plus uh, qa leaders from fortune 500 interestingly they both have two kpis uh, they all have uh, two kpis in common which is one is increase the automation test coverage and the other is you know we reduce the test execution time and with the continuous testing automation plays a key role because the team is able to run it more frequently and at each stage of stlc so net net this team is testing uh, you know doing doing lot of testing now but it doesn't end here right quality is everyone's responsibility and we have heard great things about shift flat right and if a developer contributes in in ensuring the unit testing and integration is done seamlessly it will make the whole e2 experience much faster and uh, flawless right and why do we want to do this right this is all known no science here right earlier you pick the bug it saves tons of cost uh, you know other tangible benefits like you know you you are able to have amazing customer experience ship code faster and a stable release most important so with continuous testing every action has a reaction right and one of the biggest challenge is once you adopt to automation you end up writing too many test cases right and now how they are relevant they are relevant in a way um that if you keep adding with each commit you are adding the test cases at some point of time it will clog your pipeline the other challenge is flaky test cases now with so many test cases since there's no quality control the test cases are getting added but eventually you don't know if this test case adds any value or not right and the worst is it brings in fake flakiness which is the biggest enemy we are all all managing the last is which is perhaps the most common one is who broke the bit now imagine since you have too many test cases you can't run test suit or your regression with each one of uh, with each commit so what you do is you bundle it up with say 10 commits or 50 commits or run it every 4 hours and if in if you run your integration suit and it breaks you don't know which commit broke the build the problem doesn't end here right flaky tests are everywhere even in the unit testing flaky test cases are are equally problematic right Google claims to have 1.5% test cases as flaky and an interesting number is about 80% of software companies are claiming that they have seen the same error in the in the in the test in the test environment before but were unable to reproduce and they have seen the same um, issues in the in the production so we know flaky test cases are expensive uh, engineering team invest days in fact weeks and worse there's there's no guarantee of the outcome so it's very critical for us to test our own test cases right the quality of test cases has to be there so how organization are combating the flakiness so first thing first is they do manual rerun right so if a test case failed to handle any false positive they will run it multiple times with few advancement you now have framework driven auto retry right that a frame will take care of retrying a flaky test case or a failed test case with more advancement organization have also built a programmatic approach where they build a core relationship between the test case results today and what it was the same what was the result of the same test case uh, in the last execution 
And if there is any inconsistency, it will be marked as a plate heat at scale. And the most advanced, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about more in detail, is proactively testing for flakiness. And what are those techniques? So those techniques, which some of the large enterprises are handling is uh, or managing, is running the job n number of times. This ensures that my test case is not flaky if I run it x number or n number of times. Now, this n number could be anything. For example, for Netflix, they run the test case 35 times before they say, yes, this test case, this case is not flaky. The other approach to ensure there's no flakiness in the test cases is jumbling the test cases. How it works, the developer usually writes test case assuming test case will run in sequence. Now with running them in a non-sequential order, you will bring in flakiness in the test cases if not written properly. The third approach, which is uh, you know, a good number here is about 15% test cases are flaky because of infrastructure instability, right? So looking at that, my test case fail if any problem or any infrastructure issue. So with exponential degradation approach, what we do or that we can reduce with each subsequent run to a point where test case has to fail consistently. And if test, if test case shows any different behavior, most likely it's not a play, it's, it's a flaky test case. The most advanced is called a mutation testing technique where test case stays the same, but what we do here is we change the underlying code. What we do there, we, if, if there's a test case which looks at passing, there's a code which passes string value, we would pass a variable value, an integer value there and see how test case behaves. Are those uh, values are hard coded or does it have space for dynamism? So th this is this is flakiness, right? But there's more than this. Um, just flaky test is very critical, but at the same time, uh, we want to have some intelligent mechanism that takes care of, um, you know, that builds some that, that builds some mapping between the test cases and the source code, right? So organizations are, you know, doing a lot of work in their own way, um, which is um, going back here. So which is they have built a intelligent system like Google has built a, a dependency trees where they know what test cases are um, related to what source code. And if there's any commit or pull request uh, on that module, it will trigger only set of test cases right? that saves, you know, a lot of time because you're now not running all the test cases, right? The first, I mean, the add-on to flaky test management is if you are able to control the kind of test cases or the number of test cases you execute against each build. Um, let's take another example of if there's a change in, in, in static asset, right? Or just a readme file, you don't want to you know, trigger your suit, right? So you save on, on because that's that's adds to your execution time how some of the te techniques are available or the tools available. So this, this, this system is called test impact analysis, which means analyzing how a code change impacts what test cases and we should only trigger that. So Google did something with test tab back in 2004 with some limited capability, it didn't go well. Protests were by ThoughtWorks again. And the latest addition is Azure pipeline, which is it's more of a commercial model, but again, it is limited to C sharp. Um, and then we've seen uh, lately just done the same capability, but uh, it does it does the mapping. It tells you what test case needs to run uh, when there is a code commit um, on specific code, and that is uh, that is also limited because it's it's run in the local environment. So once you know, imagine that you, you you've got flaky test uh, management in place, and then you have um, you have uh, you know that what test cases needs to run basis the code changes. Having the visualization is very important because this will help you understand to do something about it. So this is Spotify's test uh, flaky test management dashboard. Big fan of uh, the, the the this and adopted by uh, you know this approach is adopted by Google, Facebook, you know in their own way having the flaky uh, dependency trees um, or AI driven systems, right? So what we looked at is, you know, having some control around flakiness and some control around um, test impact analysis and be able to have a visualization that 
that helps you or empower you to do something about it. What we have done at Lambda Test is we built test at scale. And yes, it is open source. So what is test at scale? Test, test at scale, or we call it TAS, is looking at three components of test testing. Um, and testing at scale is one is uh, test impact analysis. So it tells you which code has to be, which test code has to be triggered uh, against the pipeline or against the change. Then it does the proactive flaky test management that some of the techniques that, that we were talking about. And then inspiration was all about those problem statements, right? And third is, is, is basically visualization. So I'll take you straight into the product and show you a working, uh, you know, the perk product here. So I hope my screen is still visible. Okay. So, um, so these are basically, you know, these are my past jobs that has run. These are some of the insights that we generate post uh, the jobs have run. And we are giving you each test case, what it's doing and what's the behavior. So for example, it's for each of the test case, I, I know that how it ran. And, you know, the, the gray one are basically the skip test. It's very important for for you guys, for, for leadership to know how many test cases are, are being skipped because they're still counting into your repo, but they are not adding any value. Then you're looking at the test cases which are getting failed with each execution and you want to see how much time, well, how long it has been failing for. That means it's taking your compute, it's adding up to your execution time, but it's not adding any value. And then once you fix it, how long it take to, you know, how long it took to, to fix the, the uh, test case to be able to run successfully. There are additional trends we have, I'm just doing a quick time check, okay, it should be. The additional trends we have is running your text execution. I spoke about you want to combine and run it against a couple of commit. So this is this graph is telling you how many times uh, the job, uh, what is the average commit against a, against a job runs, about 30 commits. And then I have a very interesting, uh, which is, which is where the test impact analysis comes into the play is the one with the blue line is my total test and the one is the impacted one. Now with each commit, I'm actually running the total, uh, the, the whole suit, which doesn't make sense, right? We just, I just spoke about. But now the problem is you never had any mechanism to even know about. It. We, we have to run the whole suit to be able to have that confidence that this, this will be a stable brief. Now, another interesting catch from this from this graph is, is between two commits, you've, the developer has done major changes that impacted the entire test suit. And this brings in big problem of, you know, the coding practices are not being follow, followed. You know, you don't want to do a, a change that leaves, uh, you know, that, that's, that create a lot of big risk having major release um, rather than doing the, the, the minor releases, right? So with the time check, I'll stop here. And uh, like I said, the tags.lambdatest.com is open source, free to try. Um, you know, the documentation will be shared post this call um, and happy to take any questions now. Hello guys, thank you very much, Sudhir. It was a very detailed and insightful talks. So I hope everyone enjoyed the session. So it was marvelous. So guys, we are now handling the Q&A for next five minutes. So if anyone has any questions, please type it into the Q&A sessions um, at the moment. So, okay. So Sudhir, do you, could you please turn on your camera, please? Right here, sorry. Yeah, so there is one question here. Uh, that's, sorry, that's my keyboard, my bad. Yeah, no worries. I think someone typing the question, one question is there. So is it paid one or is it free to use TAS? It's it's free to use, it's open source. Okay, the second one is, does it show the browser specific issues as well? No, right now just the, the supporting the unit testing, we are, um, integrating with one of the functional suit as well, uh, functional product that support functional testing. So you will see that feature coming up very soon. Okay. 
so i'm just asking one question is do you have any community version or for that or is it just totally package based it's the community version okay i think we'll, we'll wrap that uh, now so thank you very much sudhir it was a very detailed i think yeah is another one coming up does it support all the sort of test for now it supports uh, unit testing um there's a roadmap to to be able to support all kind of tests so last one is coming up what are the major reasons for flakiness of test cases um i mean i'm happy to take this over the uh, discussion table uh, because we've just got two minutes left but there are primarily there could be many reasons and some of those are like how the test cases are written what kind of consideration had been taken care of um there's a lot around uh, the the infrastructure plays a key role uh, like i said in um and uh, yeah i mean the the ordering issues uh, those some of the problems that what we have seen is is what brings in flakiness um and i think uh, if you look at from a from a from a testers perspective we are writing too many test cases um in fact duplicate test cases sometimes right so that also brings in um multiple issues around when when treating the whole build okay so thank you very much sudhir uh, it was fantastic talk insightful talk detailed talk i hope everyone enjoy so thank you very very thank much thank you sahil thank you everyone bye okay.